the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وأسعد النبيين أما بعد My students at home listeners and viewers are welcome to this edition of Islamic Studies in the ongoing e-learning program of Kaduna State Ministry of Education for Senior Secondary Schools our topic of discussion today will be on alcohol and other intoxicants. Alcohol and other intoxicants. My students, listen attentively. We will, under this topic, we will look at what alcohol is. What do we mean by alcohol? We will look at the effects of alcohol and other intoxicants. Why did Islam forbid all this? We're going to look at all that, inshallah. I'm going to look at the stages or degrees of prohibition of alcohol. And we're equally going to look at some Quranic injunctions on intoxicants, generally, inshallah. Let's now see what alcohol and other intoxicants are. Alcohol in Arabic is called khamr. Khamr. Khamr is an Arabic term. It means intoxicants. All forms of intoxicants are forbidden by Islam. Any intoxicant in Islam is haram. Intoxicants include alcohol, cannabis or Indian herb, beer, spirit, wine, heroin, cocaine, etc. Whatever is dealing with the mental health of a person, whatever takes away your senses is khamr. The Prophet is saying, Kullu muskirin khamrun. Whatever takes away your senses is called khamr. And khamr is what we mean by intoxicants. Whatever takes away your senses is regarded as khamr. And khamr in Islam is haram. We know what haram is. Haram means what doing it is condemnable. Doing it is a sin. It is punishable. But leaving it, not doing it, is rewardable. Because you know Allah forbids it. Therefore, if you know that Allah forbids it, and you do away with it, you avoid it, you are even rewarded for avoiding it. Khamr, or intoxicants, is one of the classes of haram. Why? Because it tempers with person's mental state. Khamr tempers with one's mental state. Islam doesn't just allow, uh, say you should avoid it, no. There are some reasons why Islam avoids alcohol. Users of intoxicants end up being addicted. Drug addiction is a product of intoxicants. What are the effects of alcohol and other intoxicants? The following are some negative, are some effects of, consumption, of consuming alcohol and other intoxicants. The first one is they cause damage to one's senses and may cause uneasiness. It causes damage to one's senses. One becomes mentally imbalanced. You are not balanced mentally. Even your thought is not the same as other people who are not taking alcohol. A drunkard is most of the time unable to control himself. A drunkard, many times, if he is drunk, cannot control himself. He staggers. He behaves 
in a staggering manner. He is not stable. He is not balanced. When he is coming, everybody knows that he is drunk. The way he walks, the way he talks, the way he smells shows that he is drunk. And therefore, his behavior changed immediately. He behaves like a madman. He behaves on the streets like a madman. It goes to some extent that he may even fall down. He may not even go back home. Why? Because he is in a drunken state. Alcohol and drugs consumptions can cause unnecessary aggression. It causes unnecessary aggression. What I mean by this is that somebody who is drunk gets aggressive immediately. He talks anyhow. He approaches you with the manner that you may not take from him and causes aggression between you and him. He goes ahead. He reacts violently to issues at many times, even to his family members. A drunkard may come back home, beat up his wife, beat up his children, causing damages to his own family, his own immediate family, who is supposed to love more than anybody. He don't love himself, he don't love his family because he beats them up. Look at the wives of drunkards. The manner they always find their husbands. A drunkard forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most dangerous thing to do. If you remember Allah, Allah remembers you. If you forget Allah, Allah forgets you. A drunkard always forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the deadly thing one should do in his life, forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. So the condition for Allah's remembrance on you is for you remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you remember Allah, Allah always remembers you. If you regard Allah, Allah regards you. But if you forget Allah, Allah equally forgets about you. So a drunkard forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cannot even perform salat. After tawheed, the most important ibadah is salat. A drunkard forgets salat. And sometimes you are even not allowed to perform salat if you are drunk. Why? Because it is bad. It is not good. Allah is pure. Somebody who is performing salat is communicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How will you communicate to Allah when you are drunk? And therefore, he cannot even perform salat and he can commit sins. He can do anything. A drunkard can do anything. Let's look at examples of uh, Sarasuka, those taking violence acts, kidnappers, gunmen. They are always in the state of drunkenness. They are drunk. They are not themselves. Has, their senses are touched. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this thing is wrong. Don't even go near Salah if you are drunk. A drunk addict. A drug addict or an alcoholic is a hopeless person. You are not regarded in the society. If you are talking, they say oh, he's, a drunk, he's a drunkard. If you do anything, they don't consider you. They say he's a drunkard. You are not responsible in the society. Why? Because you are always looking at as a drunkard. He sells his properties to procure intoxicants. He sells his properties, his belongings. He sells them out just to have little money to go and buy these intoxicants. He can sometimes even go and steal. If you don't have anything to sell, he can go and steal somebody's property so that he can get what to buy this intoxicant with. It is very, very dangerous. It leads you to other things.
A drunkard can cause his own death. Yes, a drunkard can cause his own death. Or the death of others. If he can cause his own death, it's something understandable. But if he can cause the death of others, this is more dangerous. Taking lives of others. For example, he can drive recklessly because his senses are touched. He feels nobody is on the road except him. He can do what he likes. He can go through that, kill himself, kill others. Therefore, he, he may be involved in an accident, killing people. He can also be mistaken for a thief or armed robber when he aimlessly walks at unholy hours in the night. When he walks in the night, he's coming back in late hours. Maybe they are pursuing a thief. A thief may hide in another place. They saw him on the street. They thought he is the thief. Then he is taking responsibility that is not his own. He has been charged as a thief while he is not. Why? Because he is drunk. He is coming back when he is expected to be with his family at home. He is found on the street roaming about and therefore is mistakenly taken as a thief or an armed robber. Maybe they are looking for an armed robber. He ran away. They come and saw him in the late hours. They thought he is the armed robber and he may be caught and even be executed. Sins and crimes are often committed under the influence of intoxicants, and therefore, intoxicants is the mother of all sins. In Islam, we consider intoxicants, al-khamr, as the mother of all sins. A drunkard can do anything. A drunkard can kill. A drunkard can do anything you think is difficult to do. A drunkard can kill his parents can kill his children, can do anything. Anything you see is haram can be done under the influence of intoxicants. Therefore, my students, take care. This world is not uh, an abode for any Muslim. We are traveling. We are living here for another place. And we will be accountable for whatever we do here. Therefore, do not take the advantage the little advantage of what you are seeing others doing. Do not engage yourself in all these alcoholic acts. Shisha, these, that, you know many of them. I don't even know their names. Any of them is an intoxicant and they are haram. They are considered khamr. Kullu muskirin khamrun. Whatever takes away your senses is regarded as khamr. It is intoxicant and it is in Islam called khamr. It is haram. Drug addiction can result, to, can result from the use of intoxicants. You are addicted to it. If you don't have it, you are not finding yourself easy. You want it by all means. You can do anything to have the money to buy these intoxicants. You can sell your properties. You can go and steal. Alcohol and other intoxicants are dangerous to mental and physical health of users. Yes. Why? You see so many madmen on the street not because they are touched by gin, not because they are touched by spirits, but they are used, they are addicted to drugs. They are addicted to this alcohol. And therefore, taking away their senses, they became mad on the street. Instead of them to be useful to the society, they are now liabilities, looking for even what to eat. They became useless on the street, mad people. Not because they are mad, no, because they made themselves mad through the influence of alcohol. My students, do not become a madman on the street. I don't want you to become mad on the street. Therefore, the simple advice is to avoid alcohol, avoid anything intoxicant. You behave abnormally. You behave like a madman. You behave as if you are not responsible. Islam prescribes 80 lashes of cane on any, as a penalty for anybody taking alcohol because it is haram. Islam doesn't permit you to take it. If to say Sharia is working, 
if anybody is found guilty of taking alcohol, Islam prescribed 80 lashes for taking alcohol. If you take alcohol, anything, even this uh, shisha you are taking, Islam says 80 lashes if you are found guilty of this offense. Let's now look at the degrees of prohibition, stages of prohibition. Um, I want us to know that when Islam came, many Arabs were found very, very addicted to alcohol. They were very, very used to alcohol. They seem that they cannot even live without alcohol. They are always taking alcohol. Therefore, Islam finds it very difficult to tell them that leave this thing, it cannot be done. It is un-Islamic. Un Islam doesn't tell them at once that alcohol is haram because they were very, very used to it. They will find it difficult to stop it at once. Therefore, Islam now forbids taking alcohol in stages. The first step in the Holy Quran that prohibits taking alcohol is Surah Al-Baqarah verses 219 to 220. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qul ma wa akbaru min Translation. They may ask you, O oh Muhammad, your people will ask you regarding alcohol and gambling. Because they know they are very used to it. They know Islam doesn't leave anything just like that. Islam is taking control of our lives. Therefore, they want to ask you, what is the position of Islam on alcohol? Tell them, if they ask you this question, tell them that in them, that is in alcohol and gambling, is a great sin. There is a great sin in taking alcohol. There is a great sin in gambling. Tell them that. And some benefits for men. Tell them that in taking alcohol and gambling, there is a great sin. But there are little benefits for men because they are used to taking it and they are benefiting from taking it. Maybe they feel, that if they take it, they feel relaxed, they feel balanced, knowing not that it is affecting their mental state. Tell them that there is a great sin in taking alcohol, there is a great sin in gambling, and there are little benefits attached to them. But the sin in them is greater than the benefits. The sin in taking alcohol, the sin in gambling is greater than the benefits derived from these two things. They may ask you also, what are they to spend? Tell them that what is beyond your needs. We've treated this when we, did, when we talk about Islamic economic system. Allah makes clear to you laws Allah is establishing laws for you so that you may reflect these laws, so that you may reflect them. Therefore, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing, he is doing it for the benefit of mankind, for our benefits. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, some people stopped taking alcohol. Allah said there is a great sin attached to it. But there is a little benefit. Why should I continue taking it? Why Allah said there is a great sin and little benefit. But some people continue taking it, but they reduced it drastically because Allah said the benefit in them is less than the sin in taking them. Therefore, some people stopped it uh, while some people reduced the rate of which they used to take alcohol. Then the next step Allah one what Allah took in uh, uh, making alcohol haram is this, that they should not approach salat when they are drunk. Nobody should approach salat when they are drunk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now said, 
يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تقربوا الصلاه وانتم سكارى حتى تعلموا ما تقولون يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تقربوا الصلاه وانتم سكارى حتى تعلموا ما تقولون this is the second step taken by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to avoid taking alcohol and other intoxicants i told you before anything that takes you out of your senses is regarded as khamr and khamr is haram this is the stage taken by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala translation the meaning of this all you who believe do not approach salat prayer when you are in drunken state if you are in drunken state do not approach salat do not go near to salat why when you are performing salat you are communicating to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why should you talk to allah when you are in this state when you are drunk can you go to your president when you are drunk how will how do you talk to him can you go to your emir when you are drunk you don't even go to your father when you are drunk why should you be communicating to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this state when you are drunk allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said do not go do not approach salat if you are drunk if you are in this state of drunkenness do not approach salat until you know the meaning of what you are saying because some people were found praying the verses of the holy quran they read as just a drunkard is talking is talk rubbish that is why the way they pray also allah now forbids praying when one is drunk allah equally say ya ayyuhal ladina amanu this is the final stage that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discouraged taking alcohol forbids taking alcohol completely the two stages before allah is taking step by step in for people to avoid taking alcohol this is the last stage that allah forbids taking alcohol completely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now said ya ayyuhal ladina amanu innama al khamr wal maisir wal ansab wal azlam rijsun min amali shaitan fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun innama yuridu shaitan an yuqi'a bainakum al adawata wal baghda'a fil khamr wal maisir wa yasuddu wa yasuddukum an dhikrillah wa an as-salah fa hal antum muntahun minin o you who believe intoxicants and game of chance and idolatrous practices and the divining arrows for the fortune are all abominations divided by shaitan they are all shaitan's handiwork they are all abominations therefore shun it avoid it do away with it in order that you may be successful so if you want to succeed if you want to be successful avoid them why shaitan only wants to show enmity it only wants to cause enmity and hatred with intoxicants alcoholic drinks and gambling and hinder you from remembrance of allah to stop you from remembrance of allah to deviate you from remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from prayer can't you desist from taking it can't you desist from taking it so here categorically allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them to forbid alcohol alcohol becomes haram completely taking it is already haram some injunctions we've read about the verses of the holy quran regarding khamr recommend how or allow the use of intoxicant there's no any part of the holy quran that recommends or allow us to take all these intoxicants many argue that earlier revelations on alcohol have been abrogated by the later ones yes the first two verses i re- uh, recited for you were abrogated by this the first verses it's telling you that there are little benefits attached to it the second verse is that when you are about to pray do not take alcohol but this last one abrogates everything it condemns everything in totality therefore they are now haram completely therefore uh, even verse the matter is fact- factual to 
other. Never you go near alcohol. Alcohol is therefore haram. I now go to assignment. I'm leaving you assignment to keep you busy, students. The first one, define khamr and give relevant examples of khamr. Not only alcohol, define khamr. Two, show how Quran gradually prohibits intoxicants. Show how Quran gradually prohibits intoxicants. Three, intoxicant is the mother of all sins. Discuss. Intoxicant is the mother of all sins. Discuss it. There are some references if you want to reverse all what I have just taught you. You can go and look for these books. The first one, Islamic Studies for Senior Secondary Schools by Aisha Lemu, published by Islamic Education Trust. The second is Islamic Studies for West African Senior Secondary Certificate Examinations and NECO, popularly known as Exam Focus. My name is Jibril Ahmad Shihu. My contact number, if you are true, if you are done with the assignment, you can send it through my WhatsApp number. Or if you have any inquiries, you can call this number, 080-6023-5708. I take the number again, 080-6023-5708. Stay safe. Do away with khamr. Be honest. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep learning. In Islam, we learn from birth to death. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.